Data from the Gordon Institute of Business Science Ethics Barometer suggesting earlier that the country still has a long way to go when it comes to dealing with ethical failures, whereas 45% of respondents witnessed at least one of 18 types of misconduct, anything from bullying in the workplace or gender discrimination over the past 24 months, less than a third reported it. The most common reason for not reporting, 43% of respondents saying, very simply, I fear I'll be victimized. Gideon Pogrand is director of the Gordon Institute of Business Science Ethics and Governance Think Tank. He's with me now on Monday lunchtime. Gideon, good afternoon to you. I want to rewind very quickly. This morning we were watching former ESCOM, ESCOM head of legal compliance, Susan Daniels, in the witness uh, box at the Zondo Commission, or on the stand, should I say. She said, as a whistleblower, she'd been castigated and vilified. My words, not hers. Is that emblematic of how whistleblowers are treated in this country? Uh, yes, our research certainly would corroborate or confirm that. Uh, many whistleblowers uh, have been subject to character assassinations, all sorts of uh, false accusations of misconduct. Uh, many of them are treated like pariahs, uh, ostracized and isolated, uh, abandoned by colleagues and even by friends. Um, so unfortunately, tragically, um, that, that, um, that problem is, is very much a widespread one. We have something called the Protected Disclosures Act, which uh, would, as it suggests, protect whistleblowers. Does that need to be reconsidered? Does that need to be improved? Yeah, our research suggests that there are ways in which uh, the act could be reconsidered and improved. I mean, one, one way would be to uh, improve education and awareness about the act. Uh, another way would be to make uh, non-compliance with the act an, an offence. Uh, I want to go back to Susan Daniels, who said that her life had been absolutely ruined. How do you make things better for whistleblowers? Um, could financial inducement be built into the equation somewhere? Certainly. Another big problem that whistleblowers face uh, are financial hardships. Uh, many of them struggle to get a job, and there's a kind of paradox uh, uh, that you have employers who acknowledge who admire whistleblowers for their contribution, but they don't want to give them a job because whistleblowers are seen as troublemakers. And so many of them uh, endure financial, very serious financial difficulties. Uh, so certainly one way of, of addressing the problem would be to offer financial support. Uh, there are critics who say that financial support might encourage the wrong behaviors. It might lead to false claims. It might erode the moral basis for whistleblowing. Uh, but evidence in the U.S. where they do have in financial incentives of whistleblowing suggests that these concerns are largely unfounded. Uh, there are other ways that we can support whistleblowers. One of them is to offer psychological support to alleviate the ostracization and isolation that many experience. Uh, another way to support whistleblowers is to celebrate them, uh, is to put them in the limelight and to uh, acknowledge the enormous contributions that they they make to organizations and to society, and in that way to uh, address the cultural stigma around whistleblowing. Just a final and a quick answer. So it's a given that you need an enormous amount of moral courage of backbone to actually blow the whistle, but if you're going to be vilified, uh, it's going to lead to growing reticence to come forward, and that has an obvious knock-on effect, doesn't it? The yeah, the, that, that, that is, of course, a great danger, that people see whistleblowers struggling, suffering uh, because of their courage, and they, in turn, are discouraged or deterred from, from doing so themselves. Uh, I think that celebrating whistleblowers is, is, is one way of providing an antidote, but, you know, at the end of the day, it does require a huge amount of moral courage. Uh, Michael Sachs, the distinguished lawyer, speaks about the need for a culture of dissent, as the most effective bulwark against ethical failures. And uh, ethical and effective leadership depends on active fellowship. That requires moral courage. There's no getting away from that. I appreciate you joining me on Monday lunchtime. Gideon Pogren, director of the Gordon Institute of Business Sciences Ethics and Governance Think Tank. And you're watching Monday lunchtime.